You run in tubeless tires. Great, but be wary. Tubeless sealant, like most things in life, doesn't last forever, meaning that if it's dried up and died, then the moment you get even a little puncture, it's not going to seal. But fear not, tubeless users. In this video, we're going to show you how to develop powers of X-ray vision so that you can look inside your tubeless tires and see when it's time to replace your sealant. Okay, that's a lie. I'm not going to do that, but I am going to show you a way that you can tell when it's time to replace your sealant. Of course, for more maintenance tips, tricks, and how-tos, you can help support the channel and everything we do by simply giving us a like and subscribe. It really does help us out, so appreciate it if you, if you do that right now. Anyway, on to the task at hand. And the first thing to think about is how long does sealant last? We get asked this all the time, but unfortunately, it's one of those annoying how long is a piece of string questions. It really does depend on a whole host of factors, such as the type of sealant you use, how much you put in in the first place, the atmospheric conditions of not only where you ride, but also where you store your bike. You kind of get the idea. But in my experience, sealant typically lasts around four to six months, although your experience may differ. Fortunately, checking your sealant is dead easy. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed that the wheels on this bike aren't actually set up tubeless. I've got tubeless tires, I've got tubeless compatible wheels, I just haven't done it yet because uh, I was in a bit of a rush and I wanted the bike in the video because, well, it's pretty. But I have got a tubeless wheel of my gravel bike here, which I'm gonna check. Step one, undo the valve and deflate the tire. Step two, remove the valve core. This can be done with a valve key that often comes with your tubeless valves or wheels. Also, some multi-tools will have a feature on them that can be used as a valve key. This is often on the chain breaker tool, or you can use a pair of pliers. If you're using a pair of pliers though, make sure you use them gently so that you don't damage anything, crush it or strip it. When you remove the valve core, rotate the wheel so that the valve is in the six o'clock position. That's because any liquid sealant that remains within the wheel and tire system will magically fall to the bottom and therefore not drip out if you've got the valve in the 12 o'clock position. It's not magic, it's just gravity. Next, you wanna get yourself a dipstick. Now for this, you can use pretty much whatever you like, as long as it's not sharp so that it's gonna pierce the tire and that it's thin enough that it can fit through the hole in the valve. Zip ties are often quite a cool thing to do because also the little like notches on the zip tie are sort of like graduations so you can see how much sealant you've got in there. I'm just gonna use this little bit of plastic tube that came off a bottle of muck off spray. If your dipstick comes out dry, it means it's time to replace your sealant as it's dried up. Now, when you come to replace your sealant, the amount that you put in is gonna be dependent on the kind of tire system you're using. So on a road setup, I would say typically between 30 and 40 milliliters of sealant. Whereas with a cross or gravel bike setup with that bigger volume tire, you're gonna be wanting to use more sealant, typically around 60 to 80 milliliters. In terms of replacing your sealant, what I tend to do on road tires is just top it up and just add some fresh stuff straight into the valve core, even if I've had sealant in there before. Some people like to take the tire off and scrape out all the dry sealant, but I kind of see this as being a bit pointless because your tire is already, you know, probably half worn by the time you're replacing your sealant. And it doesn't really save any weight or anything because most of the weight of the sealant, which is only gonna be around 30 grams if you've used 30 mils, has already gone because most of the weight is in the liquid water that's the solvent. That's dried up and gone, so you're just left with a tiny amount of weight from the residue. So yeah, I would just add fresh sealant over the top of it. On certain off-road applications, you may want to scrape out the dead sealant because you've used a lot more of it and so there's a lot more gunk in there. But again, often you can get away with just adding and topping up. When you're placing new sealant in, you can just go straight from the bottle and wing it. But if you want a more precise amount, like if you're concerned about not adding too much and particularly, you know, you're adding weight to your bike, then pouches like this are quite useful because they have a see-through part on the back and graduations. So you can actually see how much you're pushing in 
but if you want to be really precise, you can use a workshop syringe. Just make sure that if you do, that you wash it up immediately after, as otherwise it can get clogged up and, uh, and stuck if the sealant dries or anything that you use in a workshop syringe. It's always good practice to clean it straight after. And a couple more tips for you. When you go to put your sealant in, it's actually quite good to rotate the valve so that it's now at the 12 o'clock position, as this means you don't tip this upside down and pour sealant everywhere. Attach the pouch on and then rotate into the six o'clock position and squeeze out some sealant. Also, when you do change your sealant, why not consider setting a reminder on your phone for four months from now? That way you'll get a little notification and it'll, well, tell you it's worth getting your dipstick out. All that's left is to pump your tyre up and you can get on your merry way. Now, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to get your hands on one of the greatest t-shirts available to humanity, you know what to do. Head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.